Hello, welcome back again. So today we're still looking at a topic that's related to where we go to to get food. So we're looking at kitchen management. Kitchen management. Don't forget we said the kitchen is like the laboratory of what? The home, the house. That's where all the cooking takes place. Okay, it is basically made for what? meal preparation so we want to look at what it entails to manage the kitchen properly and then look at some of the things that we have and how we can manage them properly because when you're able to manage things properly they're going to last longer for us isn't it okay now let's proceed to looking at of, about all that kitchen management entails now before we proceed there are some things that are expected of you by the time we should be through with this class and lesson so the first thing is that you should be able to define kitchen management and also you should be able to state the difference between kitchen tools and equipment you should be able to know the difference between kitchen tools and what equipment another one is that you should be able to state the different items used for measurements in the kitchen we have different measuring tools and then you're going to be learning about them okay so are you ready let's get started now kitchen management kitchen management has to do with the management of the kitchen to ensure that the kitchen is managed properly and all equipment and tools are durable and of course they are of high quality and it meets to the safety of what the kitchen and they meet all safety standards so you can't just bring in anything into the kitchen and place them there that can cause hazard in the kitchen you have to ensure that everything is properly um, manage and they're all in their right shapes they're durable they are um, workable items and tools and materials in the kitchen now when you do all of this and you're properly doing what managing the kitchen now let's look at kitchen equipment kitchen equipment now kitchen equipment and materials needed to perform jobs in the kitchen okay they are easily not moved once they are installed or placed now you can't move them about when you have your kitchen equipment installed they are usually going to be there and then you don't have to move them around examples of such kitchen equipment are your refrigerator your cooker sinks cupboards and your chefs when you have them in the kitchen and they are placed you can't move them about. They are going to be there for a period of time before you can do what? Move them to do something else or you, you're getting a new one. So when they are installed, they are there and then you don't get to move them all the time. Also, now when you talk about this kitchen equipment, we have um, the fixed or large equipment. Now this is almost like the same thing we said earlier, the pieces of equipment that are usually fixed to the walls. Now you have your working surfaces, you have your sinks, now they don't get to be moved around. You have your gas cookers as you put them, they are there. Most of you, your gas cookers have been in the same position you knew them to be ever since you were young and they're still where they are they've not been moved now that's what we're talking about now these are placed and they are not easily moved your washing up sinks your working surfaces your dishwashers and all of these other things where they are placed that's where they stay okay they are not moved about in the kitchen they don't need to be moved around when you're using them these are what fixed or large kitchen equipment this is what it is called now that is your large kitchen or fixed kitchen equipment now another one that we use almost like often every day in the kitchen is referred to as the kitchen tools now kitchen tools are those materials that are often moved about in the kitchen when needed you can move them about you can place them here pick them up do whatever you want to do with them and put them back in the right places they are not heavy they are not needed to be fixed okay they have um you can put them anywhere now you have examples such as your cooking pots your knives your plates your cups your graters colanders spoons etc etc you can name them okay whenever we want to use them we just pick them from where they are we use them and then we put them back 
whenever we want to use our spoons, we pick them, we use them, and then we put them back to their positions. So they are not fixed. There are things that are movable. We use them and we place them back where they belong. These are what referred to as what kitchen tools and utensils in the kitchen. Now also, measurement in the kitchen is very, very um, compulsory. Now, if you're going to be a food nutrition student, you have to learn to measure things. Because when you do that, you're going to get accurate measurements for um, recipes and all of that. Now, when you're given recipes to prepare um, cake, let's say a lot of people like cake, right? So when you're given recipes to prepare cake, you have to follow the recipes. And then you're going to be seeing measurements. Is it's going to be in grams, it's going to be in kilograms or milligrams. Now, you have to follow through. Now, because if you don't follow through with your measurements, you're not going to get a successful product. You're not going to get a successful product. The product might not be as what you expect from it. Now, we often, let's look at the uses of scales, weight, and handy measures. Now, we often weigh and measure in order to get an accurate measurement of ingredients, yes, so as to ensure good and successful products. Now that product can be your buns, can be your donuts, can be your ice cream, can be, just list whatever you like, whatever you like. So you have to do what? Measure them. And we have different measuring what? Tools to achieve that. We have different one of them. If you can look through to the screen, you, you find your spoons, you have your balance wheel, your scales and all of that. You're going to use any of these to do what to get your measurements depending on whatever you're preparing or whatever you're making. Now you can use any of these to get what a successful product. Now want to look at the tools for weighing. Okay. Now we have different tools for weighing. We're going to look at each one of them now this one we have is scales scales is actually used to weigh okay it is used to weigh the the amount or the quantity of whatever you want to use now these are used to weigh dry or solid ingredients there are two types of scales we have two types of scales now we have more but let's look at two the two types of scales we have the balance scale um, with whey. Now the correct way is obtained when the food on the scale pan balances on the wheel or on the other um, on the, or the other so that both sides are what level. Now that one is on a small pan you just put it there and then it stays there you get accurate measurement before you now proceed to using it. Then the other one we have is a spring scale. Now the correct way is obtained when an indicator needle is pointing to the required way on the dial. Now this one, let's say you want to do um, a kg butter or fat or a kg sugar. Now you place them on top of there. It's going to point to the kg sign and then when it points there, um, when the indicator points to the kg sign, that means you already have an accurate what measurement. So you're going to have that. So that is the skills that we have, the balance skill and then the spring skill. Okay, before we move to this one, we have, um, you know, we have a digital skill today where people can use the digital skill to do what? To measure. Okay, now people are beginning to... Uh, forget and forget about analog and they begin to go digital so today we have the digital skill and then where somewhere you can just tell them and tell the the way what you want and some of them you just have to put it and then you get accurate measurement because most of these analog skills are really not so accurate as spa but the digital skill can also help too so we have the digital skill now in the market as well okay now back to some of the tools used for measuring. Now we also have the measuring cups. The measuring cups are used to measure, okay, liquid or dry ingredients to obtain correct measurement of liquid. The cup must be placed on a flat surface and the reading taken at eye level. You use your eye to understand that. Also, measuring cups, you can actually use your measuring cups by you know, leveling them to use them accurately. As you can see in the picture, we have different types of measuring cups. Maybe you're actually going to be using it for liquid. We have them in millimeters where you want to measure to the right limit you want. You can find them, you know, they're on the cup, so you can use them 
you find them in the market, you can buy one and use them to prepare your um, your snack or whatever you're preparing at home. So measuring cup is one measuring tool we can use as well. Another one is the measuring spoons. Measuring spoons. Now this one too is almost the same thing as what the measuring cup. Now these are used for measuring liquid and dry ingredients. Now the measuring spoon comes and the same for the measuring cups. It comes with different um, measurements you have the one um one cup half cup one and a half um, cup quarter cup and the whole lot of that now same thing is applicable to the measuring spoon it comes in different sizes you have the tablespoon teaspoons half teaspoons and all of that depending on what you want to do for that recipe so this is how you use the spoon to do what to measure to get accuracy for a successful product just like we said now it's very important to make use of your measuring cups and spoons so you don't over add or you add less of what the ingredients are now a lot of people feel they can just do it with all of this when it has to do with baking and then um, cooking now you have to pay close attention except you've been doing this for over time and then you're not a master of it that you know without using the measuring spoon and cups you can actually get an accurate um you can be accurate if that is not the case but ensure that you follow accurate measurement to achieve whatever product you need to do and achieve that another one is that let's look at um, uses of some small kitchen tools let's look at uses of some small kitchen tools now we have different types of kitchen tools you know we talked about earlier we looked at them um, kitchen equipment so now we're looking at small kitchen tools the one that can easily be moved about everywhere here and then small equipment kitchen tools now these are movable utensils used for preparing cooking and cleaning up a food in the kitchen now we're going to break it down we're going to look at some of them we have a whole lot of them we have a lot of kitchen tools that we use in our homes but we're going to look at a few of them okay and then we're going to look at their uses they have more than some of them have more than one uses but we'll just look at some either one and all of uh, more of it now the first one we have here is the cooking pots and pans we find them in our homes the cooking pots and pans it is used for boiling for stewing or steaming food now we use our pots for for boiling for steaming for stewing as well okay this is what we use the pots for now we also have our frying pans as a small tool or uh, utensils in the kitchen it is used for frying you can fry whatever you want to fry your eggs your chips whatever it is you want to fry okay that's what the frying pan is used for for frying and also we have the kettle the kettle is used basically for boiling water okay put water in there and then you boil it this is one equip um two we find in almost every kitchen now they are movable just like we said earlier another one we have here is the chopping board the chopping board now this is used the surface is used for cutting chopping dicing vegetables whatever it is you're dicing and chopping now the chopping board is what is used now it's always advised to use the chopping board rather than cutting on air it's very very dangerous but if you're used to cutting with a chopping board some people that's a culinary skill you know to be able to chop on a chopping board it's 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 an art so you should learn to do what to chop on the chopping use chopping board learn to use the chopping board now also we have the cook spoon and fork so the cook spoon is used for stirring turning Whenever we're cooking, you know, we use it to um, turn and the forks. And then we have different types of this um, forks to lift things from when we're frying and all of that as well. So we have pistol and mortar. We have pistol and mortar. Now it is used for pounding, especially starchy foods. A lot of us don't even know what the pistol and mortar is. Have you ever seen it for some of you? Okay, most of you have even seen it. Maybe you feel like it's an ornament or it's something that's just used as a decorative 
or for it, for decorative purposes. Now, the mortar and pistol is used to pound, you know, most of you have not used it. Use it then, it was something that we used almost like every day when mommy and dad or mom goes to the market. We have to pound our pepper, we pound a whole lot of things in there. But today I'm sure you have blenders and all of that, so you don't even know what the mortar and pistol is used for. But it is used for pounding, especially statue food. When it has to do with people pound pound the yam inside there. You pound the yam. Pound plantain with the river and people would do part and monunu in there. We pound our plantain and and the yam together, so it's used for pounding. Another one is plates and cups. We use that every time in our homes, isn't it? But can it's used for dishing up foods, liquids, our cups used for dishing up liquids for drinking and all love that we have a whole lot of them you have your graters you have your colander for straightening your sieve a whole lot of these kitchen tools and equipment in the house that we use okay they're all around us so if i've forgotten any of them i'm sure you know them you can put fill in the blank and put the list in there so that is it these things are used in our homes now let's look at labor saving devices you know what labor saving devices are you should know them because they are things that help us now today we have labor saving devices that's when i was talking about the mortar and pistol and they're also the grinding stone a lot of you don't even know what the grinding stone is looks like or what it was used for you no know, it was used to pound people still use it even the western part of the country People still use the grinding stone. You know, it has a different feeling. When I mustn't lie, I don't know how to use it effectively, but you know, I love it when I see people using it. I've tried it most times, but I don't get to know how to use it. Mm, but it's not a problem. So thank God for labor saving devices. Today we have labor saving devices. Now these are pieces of equipment that reduce the physical tax involved in carrying out some cooking processes. Now you can see the lady all relaxed. She's having a dish washed by a dishwasher. Okay, now this is what a labor saving device does. After all, you don't have to be so, you know, energetic. Use all your energy to start working and all of that. So today, thank God for technology we have a whole lot a whole lot of um, labor saving devices that can even help us vacuum clean clean our homes do a whole lot why we're not to tax um, we're not to tax in ourselves to do a whole lot of this but this can get you lazy a bit but well they are helpful so you don't get to overwork yourself so you can channel the energy to doing some other things so these are called or referred to as what labor saving devices that helps make the cooking process what easy now let's look at some labor saving devices we have some labor saving devices we have um, a mixer okay that is used for mixing cake and pastries before the mixer was here in those days i remember when we were younger when i see people making cake i'll be so scared i'll be like ah, is this the stress people have to go to make cake and then i didn't intend to become a baker because i said this wasn't worth it because you will have to turn and turn and turn but as the egg you know as we grow older we understood that you can do it you know it, it was fun and not as the way it used to be what taxing now we have um, mixers around where people can actually mix and then um, you know you don't have to be there with it you just put it in there and you know as long as there's electricity it just keeps going on and on now how do you take care of your mixer there's one thing with labor saving devices when you have them you need to ensure that you take proper care of them because if you don't you're going to get bad and you're going to spend more money to buy them so how long would you be buying these labor saving devices so when you buy them ensure you buy the ones that are durable so it can last you for a longer time okay so you can keep using it it can keep serving you for a longer period of time now care how do you care for your mixer you know you need to wipe base with what napkin wash mixing bowl and attachments now if you've used a mixing bowl before you can see the mixing bowl that um, some are made with plastic some are made with um, rub rubber and stainless steel so it depends on the one you have 
and you need to wash the mixing bowl and then the attachments with warm soapy water you can just wash them with your um, running water and then your soap then you need to dry them and store them in a dry place now if you have the stainless one you need to ensure you dry them clean them and keep them so it doesn't get rusted so you can use it for as long as you want to use it and you need to ensure that you adhere to all the safety procedures when you're using them so they can stay longer for you and now the other one we have is a blender blender today you don't have any reason to want to pound with your mortar and pistol because there's a blender now it is used for puree and grinding ingredients okay now you can do a whole lot we can do smoothies and all of these things we want to do because we have blenders and it's a easy you just put everything in there and then you put one tap on the knob it lands and then you're good to go now how do you take care of your blender okay you need to take care of them they're quite fragile okay now most of them have um the the cups are made of glass okay some are not breakable some are breakable so you need to ensure that you take proper care of them even the base so you don't get it sport and bad now how do you care for them why base with wet napkin don't wash that part don't pour water don't let water come in contact with the base don't let water come in contact with it now wash cup without allowing water to touch the bottom store in a dry place now what that means is when you're washing wash the inside make sure you wash it properly the beneath it don't let water touch that part so it can last longer for you when you're washing it now mommy could tell you to wash it make sure if you've been letting water to touch that part it's not what you're supposed to do okay you have to ensure that water doesn't come in contact with the base so it doesn't get bad and also you need to be very careful you know we talked about um electric shocks and accidents in the kitchen if you let water to come in contact with the base and water comes in contact with the wire and all of that over time it could cause electric shock that when you have to use the blender you could start feeling shock so you have to make sure that you don't let water come in contact if you have to clean the base make sure you just use something that is a little bit wet and clean it so you can use it for as long as you want to use it without any form of hazard now another one we have here is yam pounder we have a whole lot of them a whole lot of them but we're just speaking about three or four to just talk about we have dish washer like i said juicer we have um juicer which other one again a whole lot of them so we have a whole lot of them so we're just picking this tree to talk about now we have the yam pounder you know i said the mortar and pistol we have a lot to do with the mortar and pistol people pounded yam using the mortar and pistol but today you can actually do pounded yam in the comfort of your home without sweating okay by just getting a label seven device called the yam pounder it will just boil your yams put them in there on it and then it just keeps turning and then your pounded yam is ready for those people that love pounded yam okay you can do that and then it's ready so you don't have to turn this just makes the work easy for you that's what labor saving devices does now how do you care for your yam pounder white base with wet napkin don't let it come in contact with water like we said for other equipment also separate accessories wash with soapy water rinse and dry now if this when you're done using your your yam pounder ensure that you separate the accessories because there are some you know um some um, what's it called inside of them the wicks and all of that so you need to separate them keep them somewhere safe for next use very important now we want to look at some of the materials that are used in making kitchen equipment what are some of these materials that are used for making kitchen equipment do you know them okay i'm sure you know some of them now cooking utensils are made from aluminium iron steel glass etc bamboo silicon wood and um, a whole lot of them okay so your uh, cooking materials are made from these items now a choice is made from various materials according to the type or stove or cooker or burner that is being used that also depends on the user as well whatever works for you whichever one you like you can go for it 
Now let's look at aluminum. Now it is used for making pots and pans. This is almost like common everywhere. Now aluminum is used to make um, baking trays, plates, cups, measuring spoons and cups. Okay, now aluminum is used so you can use that. And how do you care for them? Wash with light abrasives and warm water. Use um, warm water, then you dry them, you can rinse them. Okay, that's how you maintain them so they can last longer for you. You don't want to buy something that you would use for a week, two weeks, one month, and then you're going back to the market again. No, who wants to do that? You don't want to be spending money on things like that. The another one is the animal, animal. So this is common too. It is used for making pots, pans, plates, and cups. Now, how do you care for them? You handle carefully as the coating chips and cracks can go off easily can go off easily. Do not subject it to abstract changes in temperature, wash with warm soapy water, rinse and dry. Okay, now this has to be taken with extreme care because it's kind of special. So you need to pay close attention to it when you're using it. Now, what is the effect of heat on um, an animal product? If you have one and you're using it now, the heavier ones are poor conductors of heat, take note, but heat more slowly and evenly now the lighter ones heat quickly but unevenly and food burns easily okay now you need to take note of them when you're buying it is it the heavier ones or the lighter ones you know what heat can do to them so it now depends on you which one that you're going in for now also we have um plastic plastic it is used for making mixing bowls washing up bowls plates cups measuring cups and spoons okay thank goodness for you know the but i say technology and then you know these things are easily cheap now before before now you don't have access to you know breakable plates steels and all of that this was where we stick to you know you know where you, you when they say go and get plates for yourself you know where you're going to but today you know people are even children babies they can use breakable plates and all of that but back then it was as if plastic was made for children but some homes still adhere to that so you don't get to break plates and cups you know just that every point in time now how do you care for them prevent scratching when cleaning do not put near fire or hot surface because when you do it's going to melt okay so you know we use um the plastic too for our washing hand machine and um, washing hand bowls and all of that so when you're using them in the kitchen you have to be very careful the effect of heat on them like i said it melts with heat when it comes in contact with heat it will melt put it close to fire when you're cooking or placed on something that is hot, it will do what? It will melt. Now, we want to look at the factors to consider in selecting kitchen equipment. Okay, now we've talked about all the kitchen equipment, the tools and the um, utensils. Now we want to look at some of the things you need to look out for when you want to go to the market to pick any of these um, equipment and tools. What are the things you need to look out for? Available money or income. Now, when you have the money to purchase some of these equipment, then it's good and fine. You can get as many as much of these equipment and tools that you need in the house. Okay, now this is one factor you need to consider. Available money or income in the house. The family has money to get them why not so money is one factor that you need to consider when purchasing kitchen equipment and tools another one is the family size how many people do you intend to cook for okay now if you need to purchase this um, tools or equipment you need to know consider your family size how many are you in the family then it will determine if you need bigger ones or just smaller ones that you can manage and use till the family expands and grow bigger you know it happens with the size of pot as well you now when the family is this small you can use some you no know, this smaller pot but as the family expands you know there's a need for for bigger pots because the family is growing so the family size is one determining factor too you need to put into consideration when 
purchasing kitchen equipment and tools. Now, another one is the convenience of the user. The convenience of the user. How convenient is it for you to use? Now, I remember, <coughs> I remember when I had my first child and I needed to buy um, a food processor. So this one I got, after I got that food processor, I really didn't even know how to use it. So after I got it, it was a tug of war for me. I just had to drop it because I had to dismantle this, I have to fix this, I have to do this. And then somehow I found some other one that really didn't need me to dismantle and then fix and all of that. So now the convenience of the user is to be considered. It's one factor that you need to consider when purchasing this kitchen e equipment and tools. Now another one is the size of the kitchen and the composition of the family. Yes, the size of the kitchen. Yes, this deep freezer might look very beautiful and I want to have it. Now do I have the kitchen space to bring it in? Or well, I just bring a deep freezer and the deep freezer will be the only thing I have in my kitchen? No. So the size of the kitchen is the determining factor as well and the composition of the family. So this can also determine your purchase of what this kitchen tools and what equipment. And another one you need to consider is avoid materials that would tarnish or chip off easily. Okay, now we when we talk about kitchen equipment and tools, there's one word we always marry together when we talk about it is durability and what efficiency. Okay, now when you're buying them, you must make sure they are durable. You must make sure they are efficient because you want to use them for a longer period of time. Now, most of you, the things that mommy and daddy has in the house, they will tell you this thing is older than you. We've been using it for so, so, so years before you were born. That's what we're talking about. That's about um, something that is durable and that is efficient because you can use it for a longer period of time. So whenever you need to purchase your kitchen tools and equipment, you need to consider the fact that they must be durable, they must be efficient. Don't buy the ones that will just tarnish off and then, you know, chip off easily. And then you will start thinking of buying, buying another one in the next two months, three months, one year, and all of that. So you need to ensure that you buy something that would last you for a longer period of time. So you don't have to go repeating buying it over and over. Make sure you buy an original if there is and then you know don't cut costs because when you buy something that it's good it's lasting for a longer time rather than going for something cheap and then you find that that when you buy something cheap going over again you spend more than what you would have used to buy what would have lasted longer for you okay so i'm sure you've learned a lot today about kitchen tools and equipment okay so you just go back and watch again and learn more so you can be more acquainted with what we have studied today thank you and see you in our next class bye for now